joke overview. 看笑话 No compromise. After a quarrel, one couple slept separately and didn't speak to each other. On the fourth day, the wife sent the dog to her husband with a note. It said, "Darling, I want to sleep with you tonight." There was no signature on the note. The husband wrote an answer and asked the dog to take the note back to his wife. It said, "I do not sleep with a dog." <laughs> Key words: 学词语夫妻 couple 夫妻 Pet. Quarrel. 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 宠物，争吵，夫妻，宠物。争吵，夫妻，宠物，争吵。Make a sentence. 学句子夫妻为宠物争吵 The couple quarreled about pets. 夫妻为宠物争吵夫妻为宠物争吵 Review. 复习，夫妻，宠物，争吵，夫妻为宠物争吵。No compromise. After a quarrel, one couple slept separately and didn't speak to each other. On the fourth day, the wife sent the dog to her husband with a note. It said, "Darling, I want to sleep with you tonight." There was no signature on the note. The husband wrote an answer and asked the dog to take the note back to his wife. It said, "I do not sleep with a dog." Do you understand? You 明白了吗 
This knot tying is the art of weaving ropes or strings. With China's long history, we can look back in time to trace the history of knotting. We will see that our ancestors used plant materials such as stems and stalks to string together bows and arrows. Also, a look at ancient fishing nets shows us that rope materials were twisted, woven, and tied together. These tasks led to the development of simple practical knots. Actually, looking back 2,000 years at the historical remains of the Peking Man archaeological site, many artifacts have been found such as bow needles with tiny eyes and jewelry made of stone and animal bones with fine details and special qualities. By observing these material objects, we can discover that even 2,000 years ago, humans were already using rope to weave ornaments, decorations, and even some clothing. It can be said that the history of knotting is almost as long-standing as the history of human civilization. In ancient China, there was a special era during the spring and autumn period when knots were used for record-keeping. A man named Zheng Xuan documented this usage of knots. A big event would be recorded using a large knot whereas a small matter required a small knot. The number of knots was decided according to the number of events. In this period, the use of knots had already developed into an essential function that required the practical skills used for binding. Furthermore, knots were imbued with a rich culture that mirrored the function of written script. In our human history, knot-based record keeping was a historical milestone. As the nature of knotting evolved and new forms developed, knots were also being used to serve decorative functions for aesthetic objects. Many famous knot designs began to appear on historic bronzeware pieces. Because of its decorative nature, knotting was first used in the process of making decorative costumes. We can see that many ancient costumes and articles of clothing have not only a decorative purpose, but also during the Tang Dynasty, these designs served a specialized purpose in the imperial palace. Knot designs of all types were used particularly to decorate jade accessories. These jade works represented a female courtesan's role and even her social status. It is easy to see how these knot designs became very important and received a great deal of attention. During the Tang Dynasty in the Imperial Palace, knot forms became formalized. Specialized knowledge of knot design was organized in great detail and grouped into several types according to the type of knots. By studying historical records, we know that in ancient times, the development of knots had reached a sort of consummate status. This ideal state continued through the Ming and Qing dynasties. The principal source of information is the famous book, Dream of the Red Mansion, that details the situation. In the 35th chapter, Jia Bao Yu and Ying Ying have a discussion that involves knots. Ying Ying gives Jia Bao Yu a knot that she tied herself. Bao Yu said to her, Oh my, what a beautiful knot. It would be great if you would make me one every day. Ying Ying responded, If you let me make one each day, I fear I will not finish in 10 years. From this passage, we learn that knots during that early period were already taking forms of flowers and other shapes. We can see and we can imagine the rich diversity of knots. In the Dream of the Red Mansion, knots were mentioned several times. Several details are mentioned that celebrate knot forms such as the tilted square, the incense pillar, the plum blossom, and the double square. These are many names for these ancient shapes. These knot pieces 
actually received quite a lot of praise from scholars. Early in the Southern Dynasty period, Emperor Liang Wu wrote this beautiful sentence: "I dreamed this double-layer silk belt was a lover knot." During the Tang Dynasty, the famous poet Li Shangyin wrote, "The banana does not open into a lilac knot; they both cast their worries into the spring wind." This describes not only beautiful knot forms, but also human moods and ways of thinking. Over the thousands of years during which China's culture has developed. Knots have served not only a practical purpose, but also served a function of beauty. Most importantly, they have become a symbol of the cultural spirit of the Chinese people. Knots have evolved, becoming a good luck charms, tokens of luck. They symbolize auspiciousness, communicate ideas of cultural exchange, and represent tender regards. They can also serve as talismans to ward off evil and prevent disaster. Therefore, Chinese knotting has a special place in our Chinese culture. It has left an indelible mark. In the wake of industrial production, we can see that this type of handmade object is quite exquisite. On the other hand, it also requires much labor and time. As a result, over the last 100 years, Chinese knotting almost disappeared from our culture. Following the reform and opening, people discovered that industrial production can give us standardization of goods and products, but these goods also lack the human touch. The people use their discriminating taste to search through antiquity, to discover that our Chinese ancestors had already invented and created many works of art that had cultural value and aesthetic significance. Chinese knotting is like a rare exotic flower in Chinese culture. Any drinks? Two lovers went into a restaurant for dinner. They looked at each other affectionately. After some time, the boy said to the girl, "Lily, you are so sweet that I could eat you up." "Darling," the girl replied excitedly, "I could eat you up too." Just then, the waitress at their side made a soft cough and asked in a low voice, "Since you two have something to eat, do you want to order any drinks?" The signals changed. A mother angrily said to her daughter, "You are unreasonable that you have three new boyfriends within three months. How did you know? Two months ago, I heard barks from the backyard. Then I heard mews last month. It became croaks this month." In the last ten years, Chinese knotting has experienced a gradual revival. It is a cherished art, a part of ancient simplicity, a harmonious object. Therefore, in this new wave, Chinese knotting has retained the natural beauty of our classical traditions, while expressing our strong national style and our rich culture. The ancestors have once again found a way to return to the center of our lives. 
through our prayers and wishes. Today we will begin to study the art of knotting. Chinese knotting has several important characteristics and many unique styles and features. For example, this lovely piece is quite complicated. But it is made entirely using a single line of string. This is a particularly distinctive trait of Chinese knotting. In addition, no matter whether it is a basic piece like this piece on top here, or this whole large piece, there is a definite vertical symmetry and a horizontal symmetry. Most importantly, the front and the back must also be symmetrical. This is the main difference between Chinese knotting and Western styles of knotting. Only Chinese knotting has these particular characteristics. For the most part, Western style knots have many pieces and use many strings. If there is a horizontal symmetry, it is likely that the vertical and the front to back relationship will not be symmetrical. It is rare to have perfect symmetry. When we are classifying different arts and crafts, we can say that only methods of knotting that use one single string and possesses horizontal, vertical, and front-to-back symmetry can be called Chinese knotting. This distinguishes it from Western knotting. Also, Chinese knotting has several other characteristics. Usually, we use red string. This color represents unity, jubilation, and excitement. Red is a popular color in China. Finally, Chinese knotting is usually done in a round shape, symbolizing harmony and unity. These characteristics mostly emerged after 1996, when knotting experienced a surge in popularity. Chinese knotting received not only the attention of the Chinese people, but also recognition from abroad. We have already learned that our Chinese ancestors imbued their knots with many cultural connotations. Throughout this long history, we have given each basic knot form a certain propitious meaning. Later, we will take a look at some pieces that are more complicated, grander in scale. No matter how many knots are combined, they are all composed of the 15 basic shapes. We can see, for example, this knot shape on top here. This little one is called the Ru Yi or wish knot. We also have luck knots, peace knots, and wealth knots. Each knot shape has a basic fixed meaning. While these knot forms were being invented, the ancients have free reign to their creativity. They used the basic forms to compose many other forms. For example, this wish knot and this luck knot, when combined into a single piece, becomes a wishing for luck knot. If there is a peace knot in each corner, we call it peace in four seasons. In short, knot forms are continually created and changed to reflect the hopes and aspirations that we have in life. These are all woven into the fabric of Chinese knot culture. A few more examples include wishes for a good harvest and perpetual luck. After some introduction, we will learn more about these forms by watching and practicing. Let's begin now. The first basic knot is the double knot. In Chinese knotting, this is the easiest, most basic knot. Let's get a string about 15 centimeters long, fold it in half, use the left hand folded level,
use the left hand to fold here. The length is decided by how large we want the finished piece. Notice here, the string closer to my body and the string farther away. Take the string close to your body and twist it up and over. Then thread it through from left to right. Take a look. This is a simple knot. This is the kind of knot everybody can make. But now we have a special requirement. We first fold the string and hold it according to our desired length. The body side string goes over from inside to outside. We need to use this finger to stabilize the piece as we work. From left to right, that makes a knot. The important step is to remember that the other string is in the middle of the new knot. This is the first step. The second step is to take the second string and thread it through the opening of the first knot. Let's do it again. From inside to outside, stabilize from left to right, but we do not thread through the single loop of the second string. When we thread it through from left to right, we must take the loose first loop and join the two loops together to form a double string loop. When they are pressed together, thread through both the first and second string from left to right. Let's adjust it. We can see this first double knot is done. This knot is made using a single string. This knot, there is a crossover in the front. Let's look at the back side. I will turn it slowly. The back also has a crossover. This knot is called the double knot. This is the first basic knot in Chinese knotting. While it is relatively simple, it is quite lovely and demonstrates that Chinese knots have horizontal, vertical and front to back symmetry. This knot by itself is used relatively rare. However, its function in knotting cannot be understated. Take a look at the previous example. The first knot is a double knot. The front has a double-sided crossover. The back side also has a double-sided crossover. It is used mostly to connect other kinds of knots. Secondly, we know Chinese knot pieces are three-dimensional weavings. However, they appear to be flat, two-sided. Therefore, as you connect different knots together, this situation is possible. The first knot faces front, the second knot perhaps is facing sideways. In this way, it is possible for a piece to become messy. Regarding this double knot, no matter how many knots are being connected, the double knot serves to maintain and preserve the fixed orientation of the piece. This knot can help adjust the direction and fix the orientation. In this way, the double knot functions to ensure that the entire piece appears even, three-dimensional, and beautiful. Okay, double knot, that is all for today. All of Tony's friends have older brothers. He admires them very much. One day, Tony says to his mom, 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 why do you love my younger brother more than me? His mom is very confused. Son, I love you as much as your brother. Why do you ask me that? 
You're lying. It's not fair. Why did you give birth to an older brother for my younger brother, but not for me? <laughs> Meeting a ghost on the phone. One night at midnight, his phone rang and Xiao Ming answered. A desperate voice at the other end said, Excuse me, is this 444-4444? Would you please call the police for me? Ask others for help. Don't ask me, replied Xiao Ming. I can only dial 444-4444. I cannot dial any other number. He can only dial 444-4444? Is it a ghost? After a while, the telephone rang again, and Xiao Ming did not dare to answer. At last he picked up the phone, for it kept ringing. The man said, Excuse me, is this 444-4444? Would you please call the police for me? My finger keeps getting stuck in the dial. <laughs> Taxi driver. On a street in Beijing, a taxi driver is stopped by a foreigner who wants to go to the airport, but he cannot speak Chinese. The foreigner talked for a long time, but could not make himself understood by the taxi driver. Anxiously, the man extends his arms to imitate a flying plane. Sure enough, the taxi driver takes a chance and says, I see, I see. No sooner has he finished his words than he takes the foreigner to his destination. After getting out of the taxi, the foreigner is dumbfounded. It's a roast duck shop. <laughs> an old lady taking plane. It is the first time an elderly woman had ever flown in a plane. When she entered the passenger compartment, she was frightened and pale. After being seated, the engine suddenly began to roar and the elderly woman closed her eyes immediately and grasped the handrail of her seat tightly. She felt a century had passed, though it was only five minutes. Hearing no noise, she opened her eyes slowly and looked out the window with courage. What a surprise this is, she said to her neighbor. You see, the plane has flown to such a height that men on the ground look as small as ants. I have to tell you, replied her neighbor, they really are ants, for the plane hasn't taken off yet. <laughs> what should Granny say? Father bought Jia Jia a toy train set. Jia Jia liked it so much that he always put them into various patterns and ran here and there with the moving train in the room. Granny entered the room and picked him up immediately. Oh, my dear, you have almost cleaned all the dust off the floor while moving. Well, what should I say? Granny, you should say thank you to me.